Okay guys, today we're going to talk about direct and indirect objects. We've been talking about direct objects for a little while now, and I'm sure all of you probably know a direct object is simply a noun that is found in a sentence that an action or a verb happens to. So the most basic sentence that I could think of in class was the player hit the baseball. Well in this case we got the player being the subject, hit being the verb, and the baseball being what the verb is acted upon. So just kind of keep that in mind. The direct object is whatever receives the action of the verb. Okay. Once you're clear with that, we're going to move on to indirect objects. And indirect objects are slightly different. Basically what I've got up here is just a um, screen cut of page 129 in your grammar book if you want to follow along. Um, I'm going to kind of edit on this a little bit uh, to hopefully help us understand this a little bit better. So an indirect object is um, basically a noun or a pronoun, just like a direct object, except these are found inside sentences that already have a direct object, and they clarify who uh, the thing happened to. So I don't really like the fact that they put to what happened in there because that's kind of con confusing for us. But uh, just think about, you know, who did this action happen to? All right, not what did it act upon, that's the direct object, but who did it happen to? If you can answer that inside the sentence, you have an indirect object. Now, an interesting, important thing is to note that indirect objects always occur in sentences that already have direct objects. So please keep that in mind. All right, let's look at the examples they give us. Um, basically, the first one says, Luke showed the class his collection of comic books, and they said that class is the example of an indirect object. So let's go through this like we normally would. Uh, first, let's find the subject of this, and in this case, the subject is going to be Luke. Okay. I'm going to go over here and switch colors really quickly. And basically, we can find out pretty quickly that uh, Luke is a subject. And the fact that he showed is going to be the verb. Okay? So now we have the subject and the verb. The next thing we need to find is the direct object. So what did Luke show? Well, he showed his collection of comic books. But of comic books, that's a prepositional phrase, so we can't count it. Basically, it showed his collection, and his clarifies collection. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and ch choose a different color. Collection would be the direct object. Okay, so that's what we've been doing so far. In this case, they take it a step further, and they want to know, who did he show this collection to? Well, he showed it to his class. So that's why class is bolded there. Class is going to be the indirect object of that one. The next one down I'll go through is, um, it says, Sarita bought us a chess set. So again, we can do the same thing. Go over and select my yellow, and we'll pick our uh, subject out. And it's uh, Sarita, obviously. Now, what did Sarita do? Sarita bought us something. Okay. So, go ahead and underline bought, or excuse me, highlight bought, because that's the action. Next thing we have to ask is, what did she buy? That's going to clarify, you know, whatever that is, the receive the action of purchasing. That's going to be the direct object. In this case, make my direct object blue. That is going to be a chess set. Uh, almost highlighted chess. I really shouldn't have. Chess clarifies set. So in this case, set should be the direct object. So Sarita bought a set. Um, and then basically you can answer the question, who did, who did she buy this for? Um, the answer to that is us, and that is the indirect object in this sentence. The next one I'll go over basically says, Dad gave whatever needed fixing his full attention. Okay, we'll do this just like last time. Start out with the subject. Subject in this case is Dad. All right. Next we'll move on to the verb. The action in this case is gave. All right. And what did dad give? Well, if you look through the sentence, he gave something uh, his full attention. Okay, so whatever needed fixing got his full attention. So in this case, he was giving his attention to something. So I'm going to use blue again. We'll identify attention because his and full clarify what type of attention. And then once we identify that as the direct object, it's pretty easy to see that whatever needed fixing is the owner of this attention. Okay, so I know this one's kind of confusing and cloudy a little bit because we don't have something as clear as us or we or class, but whatever needed fixing in this case is who 
the action happens to. Okay, it's who he delivers his attention to, if that makes any sense to you. All right, uh, just kind of wanted to clarify these other things on this page. Um, basically, it says an indirect object, like a direct object, is never in a prepositional phrase. So be very careful of those. Like this one up here where it says of comic books, that's a prepositional phrase. We can't count it as anything. Okay. So what I have here are some uh, sample sentences I just came up with really quickly. Uh, let's look for direct objects and indirect objects in both of these. And I made sure that they have both. So the first thing I want to do is, just like last time, identify the subject in each case. So the first one says, I gave her a grade report. In this case, the person doing the action is I. So go ahead and identify that. Uh, the verb in this case, really easy to see, pick a different color here, is gave. Okay, and then you just have to look at what was given. Well, in this case, it was a report because grade basically uh, clarifies what type of report it was. Okay, that's as far as we'd go before. But now I want to look at uh, can we show in this case who was receiving the action? And in this case, the answer is yes. So that's going to be our indirect object. Our indirect object in this case is going to be her. So hopefully you guys can kind of see how this works. Um, again, I would be the subject. Gave is the action. What did you give? You gave a report. Okay, so that is going to be the direct object. Who did you give the report to? You gave it to her. So that's the indirect object. Okay, let's take a look at the next one down. SpongeBob's parents gave him lunch. Okay, in this case, pick my color for the subject. It's really easy to see that we've got... SpongeBob's parents being the subject of this. What did they do? They gave. So let's get my color out here for my verb. So gave. And what did they give? They gave lunch. So that's going to be the direct object. Okay. And in this case, can we answer who it was given to? The answer is obviously going to be yes. The answer in this case is him. Okay. SpongeBob is the subject, gave is the verb, lunch is the direct object, and him is the indirect object. Okay, next one down. Mr. Prey stole her lunch money. What a dastardly guy. Okay, Mr. Prey is going to be the subject of this one. What did Mr. Prey do? He stole, so that's going to be our verb. And what was receiving the action of being stolen? It was the lunch money, or more specifically, the money, because lunch describes what type of money it was. Okay, and can we identify who this action happened to? In this case, again, we can answer yes, and that is going to be her. So her, in this case, is going to be the indirect object. All right, you guys see a lot of times these are pronouns too. Um, next one down, she told us stories about Mrs. Woodward. Okay. Hope they were good stories. Now, in this case, the action, the person doing the action is she. What did she do? She told. And what did she tell? She told us stories. So stories is going to be our direct object. Now, I can't really include anything over here with the about Mrs. Woodward because about is um, part of those phrases that we like to uh, leave out of this, which are known as prepositional phrases. Those are just kind of off limits in both uh, direct objects and indirect objects. So in this case, she told stories. Can we tell who she told the stories to? Again, we can answer that question yes, and it's going to be us. Okay, now these are kind of simplistic uh, sentences I just came up with really quickly, but the principle works the same no matter how difficult or complex a sentence gets. We'll talk more about this tomorrow.